Welcome back to Booze and the Rocks. My name is David Edwards, and today we're going to use these to make the classic Bloody Mary. But first, this. So let's get into the history of the Bloody Mary. Now, the French bartender Ferdinand Petiot claimed to have invented the Bloody Mary in 1921 while he was working at Harry's New York bar in Paris. This later would become a frequent hangout of Ernest Hemingway. Now, the original cocktail is said to have been created on a spur of the moment, according to the bar's own traditions, consisting of only vodka and tomato juice. Now, at this time, the Bloody Mary wasn't the Bloody Mary. It was the Red Snapper. Now, New York's 21 Club claims that the Bloody Mary was invented by comedian George Jessel, who used to frequent the club during the 1930s. Now, the cocktail was claimed as a new cocktail under the name Red Hammer in Life magazine in 1942, consisting of only tomato juice, vodka, and lemon juice. Now, less than a month later, a Life advertisement for French's Worcestershire sauce suggested that it be added to a virgin tomato juice cocktail, along with tomato juice, salt, and pepper. Now, eventually, this drink evolved and became known as the Bloody Mary. And whether the name for this drink came from Bloody Mary, the Queen of England, or more likely a woman named Mary who stared in the cabaret at the Bucket of Blood Saloon in Chicago. Who knows? But we're here and that's what matters. So let's get into making the Bloody Mary. And you know what? I think I need me a bucket of blood. Darn. Okay. So we have a couple of things here. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to prep our glass. And I need an equal measure of salt and pepper. So we're going to rim this and what I'm going to do is a little bit of salt here and a whole lot of pepper, so the good thing is whatever's left over, I can use to season some food, right? And that looks like a lot of pepper, probably is, but I like a little bit of spice and kick to my drinks, so. So looking pretty good there. So the drink is served in a Collins glass. And to room the glass, we're gonna take our orange, gonna give it a slight chop. And we're gonna use the fleshy bit, and we're just gonna rim the glass with a little bit of lemon juice. You don't need a whole lot. You just need enough to be able to get your, your salty uh, and peppery concoction. Now we're done with this. We can just put this here and we can leave it here. All right. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Of course it does. But now we're going to take our mixing glass. All right. So the first thing we need here is two ounces of vodka. And I've got Tito's handmade vodka here. I'm, looks like I'm right at the tail end of my bottle, so that'll give me just enough. And the two ounces, which works out to approximately 60 mil. The other thing that we need, of course, is half an ounce of lemon juice. Now I'll just take that here, swap that. Using the same, the same lemons I've already cut, because we don't want to waste anything, I'll just squeeze that out, pretty simple, like so. Half an ounce of lemon juice. I then need the recipe, most of the recipes I've said talk about drops of hot sauce. So I've got some Frank's Red Hot here. This is a hot sauce. That didn't work, so it's a couple of drops. We need some Worcestershire sauce. This is Liam Perrin's, and we need here four dashes. Looks pretty good so far, doesn't it? We want, and I'm gonna use this here. I need a little bit of a pinch of salt. Bang. I need a pinch of pepper as well. Put that there. And you know what? This drink is looking better and better. Bang. Ooh, that's an awful lot of pepper. It's gonna be an awesome drink. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it already, yes. Now the other thing I need is four ounces of a tomato sauce. Now it's really really hard where I like to find just straight tomato sauce since I've got it all over my hand. I find a lot of V8s and Mott's Clamato sauce but I did find, happen to find uh, five ounce cans of Heinz tomato juice. So we're just gonna put most of that in there. Yeah that's about right. Might be a little heavy. And the next thing we need now is a little bit of ice. You're gonna ask, well, why do we need ice, right? The interesting thing about putting some ice in here 
is that we're not shaking this per se because we want to keep the consistency and the flavor and the taste. We don't want to dilute it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this a couple of times. Four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven. So this will cool it down and allow us to keep the consistency or the consistency of our uh, tomato juice intact, which is very, very important. Now, we're ready to serve. I've got my Collins glass here and I need some ice. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we? Some ice that might actually fit. Okay, so the ice wasn't as well measured as I should have as I should have been. However. This is looking good. It smells awesome. Definitely wants me to have this with steak and eggs. So let's take a look at this. This is our Bloody Mary. Look at that gorgeous color. But we're not done. We need a garnish. So we're gonna garnish this with two different items. We're gonna use first a celery stalk because you know what? A Bloody Mary is a Bloody Mary without a chunk of celery, right? And you know what? Come on. The ice is too big, it won't, oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> And however, I need also a lemon wedge. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. I've got a lemon wedge. I can make this look nice and pretty and tasty. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. We have a Bloody Mary and I'm thoroughly upset with, with the way this is. Actually, it's funny as hell. I just can't, you just can't make this stuff up, which is great. So, uh, how do I how do I try this? You know what? Because I don't feel like jabbed in the eye, being jabbed in the eye with this. And as much as you want to see that happen, it's not happening. I like to keep my eyes intact. Oh yeah. Mm. Give me some steak. <clears throat> Give me some eggs. Oh wow, that's awesome. Not too salty. Not too peppery. It just cuts across beautifully. It's, oh, yeah, I like that. A, a last, A list drink, that's for sure. Everybody should try one of these. If you're not a fan of tomato drinks, try it anyways. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. Should I have added more pepper and salt? Should I have tried a different hot sauce? Would you think I should do something different or a different vodka? Let me know down below. But what I will do, I should have waited, is I'll tell you exactly how to make this down below. All right, in the description, in the comments, this drink is so good and this has gone so badly, it's flustered me. But if this is your last, first time here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. That way, every time we put out a new video, you get notified. But if you didn't find this video informative or entertaining, hit the thumbs down button twice and we'll see you next time. Now the French bartender Ferdinand Patio claimed to have invented the Bloody Mary in 1921 while he was working at New York bar in Paris. Now the original cocktail is said to have been created on the spur of the moment, according to the bar's own traditions. And according to
consisting. Let's get into the history of the Bloody Mary. Now, the French bartender Ferdinand Petiot claimed to have invented the Bloody Mary in 1921 while he was working at Harry's Bar. New Harry's New York Bar.